what's up? Uh, yeah, I'm back from Gen Con 2019, and it was a uh, crap ton of fun. That's a good word. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We went down to Indianapolis, uh, Indiana Convention Center. A, a lot of people. A ton of people. Uh, if you haven't been before, Gen Con is like probably one of the biggest conventions in North America. It's all about board games and card games and just games in general now. Uh, it's a ton of fun. Takes up the Indiana Convention Center, Lucas Oil Stadium, all the surrounding hotels. Uh, there's events for like four days, five days if you're lucky. Or yeah, there's actually events on all five days, Wednesday included. Um, press stuff's Wednesday, and then giant event hall, ton of vendors, new games, Kickstarter games. Um, there's one coming up, uh, District Nine. Seen it every year for the last three years I've gone. And it's just now getting to Kickstarter. So there's those kind of games, too. Um, yeah. Shenkong 2019. It was a blast. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. I don't even know where to start. I don't know. A group of friends and I go every year. Uh, it's my third year. They're like 16th year. We always have a ton of fun, eat good food, check out lots of games, and bring a bunch back and play the hell out of board games, because that's what we love to do. And I hope you can hear me. Yeah, you can. Yeah, that mic works. So, where do we start? I got this here. So those of you who might know what this is, it's a pretty cool patch, but you might know what game it's from. Any guesses? No? Um, Borderlands. So it is from Borderlands. It's Tiny Tina's Mask. We got Borderlands Tiny Tina's Robot Tea Party. XYZ Games was there. They did have a booth. So uh, I was lucky enough to get my hands on a copy thanks to a buddy of mine. Oh, I do need a kimono. That would be perfect for this. So thanks to... Jonesy here, letting me know that they would be there. Uh, I was one of the lucky few bunch to get some. As this game sold out every single day. Every day this game sold out. It was a ton of fun though. We opened it. Uh, we've actually played a few games. Look at the clap traps. Look at these guys. Clap traps. Cards are sweet. Nice backs. Ooh. Oh. There it is. Look at that. Good stock. You know, I don't know. And the game is a ton of fun like a ton of fun we played a couple rounds i enjoy it it's quick or it can be long depending on how many players are playing what mode you're playing etc but it's a sweet game for only 22 bucks how can you go wrong 20 bucks i don't know what it was 20 22 bucks us Whew, that light is bright in my eye but Tiny Tina's Robot Tea Party. Oh, so the playmat you're looking at too is a Gen Con playmat. It's my new mouse pad. Uh, it's got all the Magic Planeswalkers on it. Nico Bolas here, all in stained glass. 
It's a wide mat. It's very nice. You know, good material. And it uh, makes a sweet mouse pad. So, XYZ Games, awesome. I'm sad I didn't get to see your booth because I was busy doing stuff. <laughs> but my buddy hit it up real nice and early and quick. That's what you got to do if you want that game. You got to get there quick. Because I don't think knew too many people knew this was going to be there. And then they started lining up to get it. So, my buddy got in and out nice and quick day one. And uh, we've got Tiny Tina's Robot Tea Party. Uh, what's next? I have a... Look at this. This All this mountain of stuff is all Gen Con. Game called Plot Lines No Comrades. That... That sounds sweet. Okay, so AEG. I don't know. I don't play too many AEG games, but they had a different game on sale every day. Uh, I got a couple people over there just talking about games, chatting, seeing what was going on. So this one was the first one. It was only ten bucks. Called Custom Heroes. Um, I don't know. I tried to read the rules. It's a little complicated to say the least but I'm sure I'll figure it out I don't know it has kind of a cool mechanic I, I, so the way the guy explained it to me was it's like the basic card game of war right but with a deck of cards you run out of high numbers so in this game you try to get doubles and then higher numbers and then like so it's weird but anyway so there's these little guard thingies i'm not gonna open every game mittens uh, my buddy over there he he she mitt, mittens wants to uh do some unboxing so we're gonna send those over to mittens so anyway oh geez i'm dropping stuff so this game has these like clear cards. You see that? <laughs> I'm down to play that for sure. So, anywho, the idea. Look at all the pluses on these clear cards. Is that you play with this basic set, right? Sleeve. And as the game progresses, you start sliding these on into your sleeve to like craft stronger cards. So that's the premise of the game. Let's see these little cards. I didn't even open them yet. Yeah. See, and you get the sleeves. They're cheap sleeves, but hey, at least you get sleeves. And they give you a bunch of. Oh, maybe they're not cheap sleeves. Are these just clear sleeves? Ooh. These are... These are not cheap sleeves, but they're not... They're medium sleeves. I'm gonna actually... Uh, these play a different game. Put those over there. Okay. So, at least it says you get extras. In case they bust with all the shuffling and playing of this game. You get a little satchel. Who the hell? Oh, my phone's backwards, so I'm not gonna answer. It's too late. Pro tip, 830 at night, don't call your sprinkler guy, because he don't want to talk to you. So, Custom Heroes, AEG. I don't really understand you yet, but you look like a ton of fun. Always have room. Bam, Custom Heroes. So, also another AEG cheap game was this giant dice city i don't know i just like cheap games with lots of parts 
I don't know, it looks cool, world build win. I guess instead of playing a crappy uh, building game on my phone with no one, I could play this with friends. A dice crafting game? I can still hear my phone ringing, but it's not. That's so strange. Use tactics and strategy. I'm just reading this off of my monitor. I've never read this. Create strong armies. Cool. Uh, I just thought I was like hoping that oh maybe I get all these colors of six sided die, and you know what? Again, sight here. Oh god. Again, just a ton of stuff for like ten bucks, fifteen bucks. No, fifteen for this one. Jesus Murphy. Look at this. You got all these boards. How many boards do you need to play this game? As many as you want. We've got boards for days. This is actually one like. Custom Heroes is like, yeah, it looks fun. But this game, I'm actually excited to play through. The rule book seems pretty simple. It's big, this rule book, but it seems pretty simple. What, you get like a, a CD, I don't know. Dice Step Reference Sheet. Okay, so like how to play your turns. You get little baby cards. Something armies. I don't know. Dice it in. So we're going to need some tobacco sleeves. Some trade chips. I don't know. Some more dice city cards. Always room. We got nice little trays to put all these cards once they're all broken out. And then to my delight. A t crap ton of D6s in those colors. Light shine. They're just D6. I don't know why. Like, look at those. It's so amazing. So, yeah, Dice City. I don't know. Looks like some fun. Got a metric fuck ton of pieces. I mean, metric <laughs> of pieces. Dice City, coming against your city. Um, I don't know what's next. What's next? I'm starting to run. I'm, man, I'm burning through this nice and quick. Jenga was tons of fun, man. There's just so much to see and do. I didn't even play. I played a, a half a demo. I mean. I was lucky that. How I put this? I look at a bunch of games as I walk through, right? I hear all these games like, okay, it looks like this, looks like this. There's one game stood out. It's my personal favorite pick of the whole Gen Con, whatever. Experience. I don't want to say show, because there's a ton of good games. And if this isn't for you, then there's other games for you. But for me, this game, it looks sweet. Like, it's going to be so much fun. And I'm so excited to play. And the next expansion is going to be amazing. And I want to get that, even though I've only played half a demo. That's how cool this game looks. But I'm going to procrastinate and show you other games first. Oh! Grocery store stuff. So I'm from Canada, so we don't get cool stuff. Like, I got this Funfetti Pillsbury cake. So excited to make Funfetti cake. You don't even understand. I got this weird cereal. Sour Patch Kids cereal. It's like... Good. But gross at the same time. And I can only imagine... Drinking... Eating it with milk would resembles somewhat of like vinegar milk I see I've been trimming down so like I didn't want to get the uh, the 10 gallon bags of fruity pebbles in fear of 
needing to go back to a double XL. And then for the girlfriend, got some crazy unicorn cereal. It's magic cupcake flavor. So if you don't know, then now you know. But I actually really want to try this. It looks awesome. Oh, big burrito. You want to do the big burrito? Oh, yeah. She brought this up. This was another special find. Unicorn pudding. And the best part is unicorn tattoos inside. So it was a fun festive weekend. And, you know, Gen Con is a huge conference. And there's a ton of us nerds there. And, you know, I got to say... We need to dress up some more. Not like saying we underdress, but like get some more colors out there. Us nerds, we always stick to the blues, blacks, and grays. It's just an ocean of blue and black gray t-shirts. And not that there's anything wrong with it. I'm wearing a black t-shirt right now. But, you know, let's, we just got to mix it up. And that's why I made sure to wear something that was fluorescent pink every day at Gen Con help bring some some color into our lives and then I found wonderful things like unicorn pudding with unicorn tattoos and you know I'm putting on those tattoos you know all right okay I'm moving on back to games no more pudding burrito I know we're gonna leave the burrito there so this was a game I did not expect to see or buy but I did because it has a one player option and well I'm a loser and sometimes I like to play one player board games at home by myself oh 100% that pudding tastes like magic I don't doubt it does it even say a flavor it's made with stardust how could it not taste like magic hashtag yes unicorn that's hilarious there's a unicorn shake recipe inside. No high fru fructose corn syrup. Poof. The pink pudding has 14 grams of sugar. Look out. So anyway, this game, Simon, CMO. O N games. Simon. Or as I like to say, come on. Come on games. Like come on, play some games. Had this gem. So I picked it up. God of War the card game. It looks pretty cool. I don't know. It's a one player game. Well one to four. And I love the video game franchise like a whole lot and I get bored sometimes so why not continue it with the board game Kratos and the Sun Look at all the pieces. I know that's a silly reason to buy a game. I was already into this one too. Rule book. Let me put that away. I hate when it's these. You pay like $40 for a game. This is your main hero. Oops, I punched it. Now it's over at the last. But whatever, it looks cool. It's one player. You can't expect the world from everything. You're paying for the license mainly, but let's hope it's cool. I do like all the stuff here. So you got like these big character cards. Why does everyone look so crooked? Knowledge and wisdom. Oh, I guess I should have done like this. Oh, God. But you, you get the idea. 
there's there's the healing cards. Um, I guess one singular dice is all you need to play this game, so there's that. Little stands for the crappy cardboard dudes. Um, I think boss cards. I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. I'm showing the boss on camera. Then we got some plus cards. Big old stack of cards. Small stack of cards. Status cards. Another big old stack of cards for plus cards again. I don't know. And then I'm guessing all of these are the different scenario tiles that you gotta move through. And there's a bunch of them. There's probably like 15 to 20 cards in each of these. So there's quite a bit here. I'm excited to check out what this game is all about. In one or four player mode. I'm just gonna have some Twix while I pack this up. Simon Games. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm bad at this camera stuff. Okay. It's burrito time. The Exploding Kittens booth, as always, is next level genius. The giant cat vending machine is the most hilarious shit ever. I don't even know where my random... I got underwear this time. A butterfly. It was awesome. But this is Exploding Kittens. I think that's their company name. Whatever. Game of Kittens. Exploding Kittens. This is their new game. Throw Throw Burrito. And yes, you're reading that correctly. This is a dodgeball card game. And yes, you do throw the little burritos. So this game looks like a ton of fun. Seriously, I don't want to mess with this burrito on the back of the box. It's a grown-up game night and family game night, apparently. Played in 15 minutes. There's a burrito duel where you throw the burritos at each other. All sorts of craziness. You can force burrito battles. And you just chuck burritos at each other. <sighs> Whatever. No, we don't, we don't need that light anyway. It's just distracting my eyeballs. So... Um, rules. We'll need those at some point. Uh, empty baggy for. Oh, these things. When you punch them out, the little, there's a little. The burritos. Um, an ad for their other games. And cards. Floaty goaty, baby. Um, the cards are cool. Good stock. Original edition there on the. Says that. Printed on the other side. Printed. But I keep moving too much. Bam. Original edition. Anywho. Oh, I knocked over the ad. Yeah, man, this is baby. You got crabs, exploding kittens. Okay, there. Now I'm done advertising exploding kittens, but the booth is awesome. And look at these little burritos. They're so cute. <laughs> They're so cute and soft. The little kitten burritos. Oh, the flexing burrito. Wait, look at what lies underneath the cute burrito.
Like, that is the greatest thing. The greatest. Um... So that's uh, that's Rose Row Burrito. It's Rose Row Burrito. Dodgeball card game. Fear me. <laughs> the roided out burrito. Um, we got this little guy. Also at the Exploding Kittens booth. He's so cute. Look at him, he's the little no kitty. The, the little no kitty. Any anyway, the no kitty's cute as hell. No. Oh. Drop him. Uh what's next? Let's get through some little stuff. Some dinky stuff. So I got this. Did I have my chocolate bar downstairs too? I did. I got this cool Starfinder pin for free. I don't know. It's from Pathfinder or Star, but Starfinder. So that was kind of cool. District Nine, the board game, looks sweet, and it's finally coming to Kickstarter September fourth. So be sure to check it out because it looks awesome. I see it every year at Gen Con. The lineup is way too big for me to sit down and play because I just, I'm on the move. What a workshop. Uh, they got this other game that's cool. Heavy hitters. Always wanted to check it out and play, but one year I'll buy it. It's just, it's so expensive. But don't get me wrong, it looks worth it because you get these huge models. Some of them, I believe, are painted. It they, they look like they got sweet games, and I never ever sit down to play some demos. Maybe this year, I'll, next year, I'll sit down and play heavy hitters. And they got the collectibles. These things, oh man, these things always look sweet. They had the Lord of the Rings before, but now they got a whole bunch of other ones. Um, the Alien Xenomorph was there. Like. These things are awesome. They got the Borderlands characters, Ghostbusters, Apex. What a workshop. What a... Your booth is cool, always. And the lady was sweet. Uh, I got this Bad Taco sticker, and it's like my favorite sticker. And she hooked it up with a bunch more sheets because they had them this year again. So thank you very much for that. Now I have several bad tacos. They're real bad hombres. Look at this guy. So, I don't know. It's funny as hell. And it's got a pink elephant on it. And then District 9. Finally coming out. Sort of. Kickstarter. So get out there and back it. Because it looks like a really cool game. District 9. Tons of minis. Looks cool as hell. Um, those who like to dabble in the adult stuff, as always, cosplay deviants are there, handing out these dice bags to literally anyone who walks by. So... If you'd like a dice bag from 2007, you can just get one at Gen Con 2019. Um, they had a Die Hard board game. They gave me this pin because the guy who was John McClane really liked my shirt that I was wearing the one day. So I got this pin. And I got a crunchy bar, but instead of crunchy, it says Die Hard. And it's downstairs. And I'm too lazy. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you're anywhere within the orbit of that booth, 
you will end up with a dice bag in your hands. They just like everywhere. Dice bag. <gasps> Here's the crunchy bar. Bam. Die hard crunchy bar. The heist board game. I was trying to crack the safe to win a free copy. All of the other other dice bags. So this was a pretty cool idea. That it's just a free stand in the line, spin a wheel, get a code. If the code worked in the safe, you want a copy of the game. If not, you get your choice of this or this. But John McClain liked my liked my swag. He liked the pink t-shirt. So he hooked it up with a little bow. That's all I'm saying. Anywho, die hard, pin. No, I'm put this in the wrong way. Die hard, oh, die hard, pin, pin. Gen Con coupon book. Almost unused because I'm a doofus and I don't ever just run around and do all this. All of this looks cool. Sentinels of the Multiverse Core game. You get one expansion for free. So like, there's so many good coupons in here. But it's like, I'm always so like, uh, all over the place. I get $5 off the other exclusive Gen Con mat, which was a cool mat, but I like this one more, so I bought this one. The stained glass is so beautiful. Ah. I already set it all up, so like, I'm sorry I can't see it all. But it's just coupons. It's coupons for free shit, for like free tentacle monster. All you uh, hentai fans out there, go get your very own uh, tentacle monster. You know, you get a little pink job, you got your own, uh, your own uh, tentacle monster. Free raffle ticket for something. Present this coupon for $20 off any game. Raccoon Tycoon, Railroad Rivals, Pirates, Forbidden Games. It's 20 bucks off. All you do is find the coupon. Five bucks off. Formal Fair Games. Action. Fudge. Nuts. I was at an event and he was there and I liked this games and I wanted to get bad medicine but I had no idea this guy was there and he's a tiny little booth but if I would have read the coupon book not only would I have seen that he was there but I would have gotten five dollars off so pro tip go get a coupon book and sit down and read it if miniature market you get money on bonus on trading you got extra money if you sell cards to certain people like the coupon book is where it's at Oh shit. 30. Don't tell me. Twenty percent off all games. <sighs> That's black. I bought something at that booth. Oh, free patch. Okay, I have my homie hooked me up with the patch. Whatever, don't. It's over now. We have the beautiful Gen Con program. I don't know, it's got all the info in it. It's a program. It's cool. This game. I saw minis and they look cool. Anyway, this game's coming out on Kickstarter. August 13th. Oh, made it. You haven't missed much. Well, okay, you missed a bunch. But, um, I'll go over some highlights real quick for you after. Before, because the next, coming up next is the, like, the, the tail end. Like, the best stuff. So, Shovel Knight is getting a board game. Kickstarter, August 13th. The minis look sick. The game looks like a ton of fun. Um... I'm definitely going to be checking it out.
Oh, yeah. All right. So, Shovel Knight, the game on Kickstarter. It looks really cool. I'm going to check it out. There you go. Panda Cult. They had some cool games, so. Bam! Throw, throw, burrito, son! New game by Exploding Kittens. This is the piece you gotta see. We gotta get the one piece. I should just keep this handy. So you get these plushy burritos to throw at each other. It's a dodgeball card game. Enough said. Genius. Uh, highlights. God War board game, one to four players. Simon. Come on, games. We got some American snacks, naughty dice bags, um, discount games. This game looks like a ton of fun. AG, it's got tiny little cards, a bunch of dice. Really looks sweet. Um, custom heroes over here. Man, I haven't really done anything. Uh, and Tiny Tina's Robot Tea Party X Y Z. This game is fun as hell. There, bam, highlights. Yeah. Holy crap. Did I get it all? Oh, what did I forget? <gasps> Bam. Okay. Now the highlights are done. Well, not highlights. Um, recap. Dragon Shield time. Dragon Shield, very cool, as always. They had a big hardcover book there. All the art of all the different dragons with the lore of all the different dragons. Super cool. Artist was there, sign or the author was there signing the books. Like it was really cool, don't get me wrong. But just it's just gonna send them out on the other books. I'll flip through it. I might read it. And it's just gonna hang out over there with books and amiibos. So I didn't get it. But they were sweet and they hooked me up with one promo. The other two of these are my buddies, so I gotta get these to them. They were cool about me hanging on to them just so I could flex. But then I told you the truth. So they're not all mine, but look at how cool these tokens are. We got, can't even see that. Avatar. And it's hollow. 2020. So that's another avatar. And a 4 4 flying dragon. That's cool. A. F. So, bam. Dragon shield. Cool dudes and gals. Uh, they had the pin bazaar this year with dragon shield. So. This pin, uh, I'm trying to, oh, there it is. This pin is dope. I don't like pins that much, but I like this one. This is a nice pin. So I'm excited about this. It's a pin. Excited about it. So they, at this Gen Con, they launched the non-glare sleeves for streaming, all that good stuff. I'm pretty sure... No, those are just in reflective. So, uh, am I going to be able to have a comparison? I should have gotten this ready ahead of time, but I didn't. Oh, there's the same card. Okay, so they launched their non-glare sleeves for streaming and other sorts of camera work. I think they're pretty cool. They had matte purple, blue. They had like four colors. And then they had these bad boys. 
So, I put this to a little hand, but you know, once I got to look at them a little more, I thought they were pretty sweet. So, some commemorative Dragon Shield non glare. That is a sick box. Um, non glare. And that's what the back looks like. So, this is sick. Put those over there. So, here is. A Pokemon Reverse Hollow in one of them. Pretty sweet. Uh, let's see. Here's the same card in a regular Dragon Shield. Any difference? I mean, yeah, kind of. You can see the reflection in this one, and I can't see the like. See, see my computer screen in the background moving around. But this one, you got nothing. The glare from the light. Let me go over here maybe a little more. Where's my light? Right there. Oh, they still glare the same. Bing! But anyway, I mean, like, so it's not as bad. But there you go. Dragon Shield. Non-glare. Yeah, it did. it did remind me of like the old school packaging, so that's why I just picked up one pack. I thought they were cool, nothing to go crazy about, but uh, I'm going to sleeve some of my board game cards in them because I think they're really nice and they shouldn't get, well, they're going to get shuffled like crazy anyway. Um, so put that like that, a little like that, a little bit of that. Uh, one more pack of Dragon Shields. They've launched a art line of Cowboy Bebop. They had the title card, whatever that is. I don't know. I just thought, I don't watch Cowboy Bebop. I just thought these sleeves look sick, so I picked them up. They're the face sleeves. There she is, chilling on the side. And then this is what the sleeves are gonna look like. But you know, whatever. So. I don't know. I got them. They were good price. They just launched. There's the other side. Uh, it was these or the title card. Dragon Shield, good quality. Uh, I've been hearing pretty good things about their art sleeves, so I'm sure these will hold up just as well. We're almost done. There's just two things left, but each thing has multiple things. So, I'll let you guys decide. Do you want to see my favorite thing from Gen Con or Satan? My favorite thing from Gen Con, Satan. Satan. Okay. So... The devil was at Gen Con. They had their, ooh, come look at our upcoming exclusives booth. And, oh, you're probably rock hard to collect these. Which I'm not. I'm not rock hard to collect these. I'm not even rock hard to collect these over here. These stupid things. Anywho. Everybody's favorite... Vinyl manufacturer, mass producer of garbage and waste, soon to cover the world in figures, Funko Pops was at Gen Con to release their new game, Funkover. can I say? Funkoverse. We got more pops. More pop figures. Now, I hate pop figures. I have two or three. Four. Four. I hate all of them. I still have them.
This game is fun. That's the problem. This game is fun. I enjoy this game. I really do. It's like a fun version of my favorite game. Like, this is the one you, you take serious and you get all salty you don't win. And you, like, argue for a little while about how your buddy was being a cheap ass. And all this other stuff. And then just to cut the air and to keep the same kind of play style, you play this game. Funko verse. I gotta get these lefts and rights done. So I got the Rick and Morty and the Golden Girl series because um, it's maximum hilarious, right? So there is a DC four pack, there is a DC two pack, a Harry Potter four pack, a Harry Potter two pack. Um, all that stuff is just like to me. So I thought this is a super fun game that is meant to not be taken, like, it, take it seriously, but not, don't take it seriously. Like, we'll get to it. So I picked the two most ridiculous expansions I could pick. And the cool thing is, each expansion, you could play on its own. This is a playable board game. This, playable board game. The four pack, playable board game. You can also take any two expansions, smash them together, playable board game. You can do scenarios from this game, this game, with the characters fused. You can take Batman and mix him with Rick over here. Rick, you know, they can be on a team together. You can have Joker and Blanche together on a team, you know, cruising the, cruising the night. So, anywho, there's items any character can hold any item, so you can give, say, Batman the cheesecake, or um, and Blanche can take a Batarang, or can take the portal gun, which I think is the item in this game. Whatever it is, um, you can give it to whoever you want. Like it's all about mixing and blending, and you know Funko, they're gonna be cranking these out. Each character has their own move set has their own abilities, has their own movement tactics. Uh, it can be played as a one versus one, a two versus two, a four player free for all, each with different scenarios. Uh, the cool thing is too, you can, even just with this, you can still play four player as it adds these token generic characters to the game, which essentially would be what you're swapping out for when you start adding this in. And I haven't opened them yet because I got into a ton of stuff and, you know, people love Funko. So I was thinking uh, maybe letting Mittens get a crack at these and uh, see what happens. But anyway, I don't know. I just thought, it, like, no joke. I went in there. They're teaching this game and I'm sitting there like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the guy's talking. Like, I'm not trying to be rude. I, I had a long... I had to wake up, because I'm an animal, right? So I stayed up until like 4 a.m. every day. But then because of this other game being very hard to get and very, very, very limited copies, I had to wake up very early every day and mosey down to Gen Con and get in line. So at this point in the day, I'm kind of on my little lull crash before I again. It happens. It's really weird and it's kind of special, so you gotta see it to believe it. But like, no joke. If there's like, there's room. So, if you want to experience it, I suggest it. And like I said, I'm an animal. Anywho, so he's teaching. I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, my buddy's there. He's kind of in the same mood. My other two buddies are we're playing against are taking it real serious. <laughs> They're getting salty because we're kind of just like. Chah! And hitting hot numbers on the dice. But as the game progresses, I'm just like letting the rules absorb. And they're pretty easy. And then all of a sudden, the guy demoing it is not knowing rules. But I know the rules better than he does. And then he verifies my rules. And like, yeah, that's actually how the game works. So I'm like, this game is awesome. Not just because I figured out the rules. But like, there's so many little tricks and little fun stuff to it. 
then you can just like don't take it seriously just let loose and be like rick and blanche versus morty and rose and away you go you know it's got mechanics it does it's got fun little goofy stuff and like we were playing harley quinn and the joker against batman and batgirl and we end up losing whatever the Joker has this buzzer attack, and my, it knocks Batman over, but then you gotta get knocked down twice to get knocked off the board. What I, I did. Anywho, he just kept buzzering the shit out of him. It was hilarious. We're dying laughing. It's like, hitting the criticals on the dice because they got um, attack, defend, or crit on the dice, and there's only one quits, crit square on the dice. And Buddy's hitting all three. Take that, Batman. It's, we gotta play this sometime. It's so much fun. I think it's August 24th or 5th. August 24th at the CG Rome in Windsor is gonna be like a big demo day where a bunch of games from Origins and Gen Con will be there. We'll be demoing them, showing people how to play, playing along. So you guys should come out and we'll play some of this. Funko verse. As much as I hate you, Funko Pop. That's all I got. This is a good, it's a good game. And and they know how to box, man. Look at these dolls, the way the Funko was on it. And like, the feel of the box. And you know, you see the figures you're getting. And then they got the little thing of all the cheesecake. And you're like, oh man. And then you look at the back and you're like, oh shit, look at all these pieces that I get. Anyway, um. So, I mean, I guess that's it. Oh, uh, you know. Oh, no, I got this cool little poster. Oh, I take a shower every time after I talk about this Funko Pop game. Every time. But guess what? When you guys play it, you're going to be like, I love this game. <laughs> but anywho, because who goes first like switches each round. This is kind of cool, but an idea for the future. So this it flips, right? Like good guys, bad guys, or whatever, whatever, however you want to determine it. So like, you know, it shouldn't be a pin, man. If this was a steel counter. Us nerds, we love buttons and stuff, but you know what we love more? Replacing plastic and paper tokens of our board games with like nice metal objects. We love little, oh, like I'm gonna snip, I'm probably gonna snip the pins off of this. Figure out how to glue this biatch together. And then I got a sick metal counter for my Funko game. So, yeah, we love it. Steel. Like if Pokemon came out with a steel GX counter, you know everybody be buying that thing just to get the little <gasps> steel GX. Okay, so from Mondo, which is like, they had they, they have a movie theater company chain. <laughs> Melted. Oh yeah, forge it together. Oh, Picaram tin. No. Now I have to get a Picaram tin. Anyway, 
Uh, this pin is cool as hell. It's by Mondo. They own a theater chain. They do posters, collectible figures. They get this Kratos that I kind of want, but it's like $300. They do cool pins. A lot of licensed stuff. They also teamed up with Restoration Games to make the game over here that was super freaking hard to get every damn day at Gen Con. And I had to, like, not run through to get copies of this. Not even copies. To, like... I had to fight, not fight, but I, you know what I mean. I battled for four days, three days to get these. It took until the very last day of Gen Con to finally get all the, the, the pieces of the set. Even though most of it's standalone. But they go, they go together. You understand. Anywho, they also had this cool ass pin. And it made me think of a very good buddy of mine who's also watching. And I really just like the pin. So, there's this. Oh, yeah. Having a good time. Man, look how clear that looks. Roll with it, baby. Dude, I still contemplate getting, um, <laughs> nice, we got multiple Katamari fans in here. I keep thinking about getting it on, I think it's on Switch, but I've yet to pull the trigger. Okay. So, <laughs> Mondo and Restoration Games have come up with a game called, we'll call it un, using the unmatched system. I don't know. Unmatched. We've got Unmatched Battle Legends Volume 1, which means there will be more Battle of Legends. We have an unmatched standalone. Uh, it's two 1v1. I'll explain who the Vs are after. And then we have a singular person standalone. Oh, yeah. That is a. Uh, it's pretty spicy. Okay. I'm really hyped about this game, and I want to play this game like a whole lot. Like a whole lot. So, Unmatched Battle for Legends. We got King Arthur, Alice from Alice in Wonderland, Medusa, and Sinbad. The game is two to four players. As you can see there, it looks cool as hell. You get miniatures and little tokens, and it is a versus, essentially a versus system, but not versus system. You know what I mean. Uh. The boards are small. The fights are epic. I can't wait. Oh, it's got health counters. All sorts of cool. Look at this. The board is double-sided. So that you have two different terrains to play on with this version. Rules. Oh, you're getting them minis, eh? eh? Each player, each person has their own cards, their own character card. So it tells you their movement, what type of attack they do, their starting HP, and their companions' similar information. It also has their special ability. So, it has a deck, some cards. Each card has different stuff on the top. So, this is like an attack or defense card. Then you have instance. I don't know what to call them. Um, a scheme. A scheme card. And attack cards. And... Attack and defense cards. Other characters have defense cards as well. Um, each card has the name on the side, so it tells you who can use it, whether it's Simbad or his companion, the Porter. 
Sinbad also has a bunch of badass any cards. So, and that goes, and they're all different. So you got a deck for Medusa, which I haven't opened yet, and her Harpies, and all the, you know. I'm sure Medusa does some crazy stuff. You got these high-end little plastic tokens. Medusa's Harpy. She has three companions. Everybody else only has one. They have, but, you know, they're stronger compared to weaker. Like, this game looks like so much fun. This I've only half demoed it, and I'm in all the way. We need to play King Arthur and Merlin. And we got Alice and the Jabberwocky. The Jabberwocky, Jabberwock, Jabberwocky, the Jabberwock. Pow. Alice can get big and small. It goes snicker snick. Look at these things. So now I gotta paint these, which I'm also kind of really excited for because I've never painted before. I like to paint them, but never painted miniatures. And I'm really shit at art, but it's such small little tiny areas. So as long as you get a tiny brush and you're really careful, it can't be like it's hard, but like just take your time and you won't screw it up. And I got a few friends who paint, so they're gonna help me out. Why do you look like a big basin? Nice. So then we got Sinbad. He looks cool and he's all muscly. And then we got a badass Alice. Like she ain't playing. Sword is so cool. Unfocus for my face. Anyway, you get the idea. Oh, that's sweet. So even see, help is everywhere. Alice can be big or small. So and I like that the board is so small. Like there's nowhere to hide. This is not like, ooh, we want to hide. No, this is verse. We're going, it's going down. You want to know how you win? You kill everyone. Last player standing wins. Except for in teams. Then it's the last team standing. Ooh, that looks sick. Look at this. In battle, there are no equals. Unmatched. Bow. So we got, I got to make all the health dials, which is cool that you get health dials so you don't need a billion D20s and stuff. And then you got Alice's big and small token. So then, the next piece, this is the piece that I saw. And I was like, what? You got these two motherfuckers fighting each other? Like, this game's going to be sick. So then this is how she showed me how to play. For some reason, even though this was out, she went and got King Arthur cards, but whatever, it's cool. I don't even open it yet, so I might let Mins have a go at this one. But these minis are cool too. Robin Hood versus Bigfoot. In the unmatched, look at this thing. buck stops here the jackalope that's what bigfoot J bigfoot's got a jackalope and robin hood's got outlaws so there's a uh, good shot of what the minis will look like robin hood is ranged i think the range characters are going to be bananas in this game and I think Sinbad's going to be real good. And see, look at this. 
Where does it say? Right over here. Right here. You can mix and match any of them. So, like, I can be, like, playing Robin Hood on the Legends board, fighting Simban, who's on this board with Medusa fighting Bigfoot. Somebody told me that, like, some Buffy the Vampire is going to come out. So, if you're into that, I mean, I just want vampires in the game. That'd be kind of cool. September expansion, which I'm going to be looking to get or find. Or I don't even know if it's September. I don't know when. But the next expansion, it's going to be hard for us Canadians to get. So, they have to order to an American P.O. box. But don't tell nobody I did it. Is Jurassic Park. You got this they had it on display there it looks so sick it's got three raptors as the models for the like instead of having like robin hood's got three buddies and then three little tokens but this time they flipping it and there's three raptor models which is sick and it's the uh who is it the guy uh you know with the shotgun clever girl that guy shoot her shoot her that guy he's the guy so, like, Jurassic Park is low-key going to be legit. And then, my number one ombre, I can't wait to paint this mini. Because I think it's going to look sick if you do it right with the shadowing. And you get the toneature of the muscles. Is a single dude expansion. Not saying like dupe, but like it's just one little mini. But you can add it, and again, all unmatched works together. You got Bigfoot Robin Hood, you got Legends, and you have the man, the myth, the legend, Bruce Lee. So sick. Oh man. Uh, of course, see, this is what I needed the clear sleeves for. For the character cards. Because in the character cards, you have your powers and stuff. And on the back, you have essentially how to play the game. And it's literally super easy. Like, if you read that, you are 50% of the way playing the game. You just got to explain, like, the little mini details. But you know Bruce Lee, his deck already opened, read through, enjoyed, and sleeved in the Dragon Shields. It's a no-brainer. You know what I mean? And it feels nice. Ooh. I put his dial together already. Like, I'm ready to go with Bruce Lee. It's on. Got his little model. Anyway, so cool. Unmatched. This game. So sick looking. Is this just an extra card or? Oh no. So it also tells you too how many number of them are in the deck. So you gotta keep the deck the same if you wanna put in the uh, cool ass thing I'm about to show you. You gotta take one 
out. You can't just stack your deck. But I was lucky enough to get one of these cool ass promos with one of my favorite things, gold foil. I love gold foil. I love gold foil. Pow. Look at the way this card. Woo. Oh. It's nice. Little dragon. Just a little dragon. Then you want know the dope thing about Bruce Lee? He ain't got no companion. It's all Bruce Lee. All these other dudes in Unmatch have companions, little tokens, little homies running around with them. He don't need ex I'm just gonna say that. He don't need one. His only two homies are his feet and his fists. Bruce Lee, unmatched. However, he got, you know, man, you never know. You're gonna get sniped. Robin Hood, Medusa. But Bruce Lee, catch that arrow. Catch that other arrow. Pa -pa. Stab him. Goal foil. So, yeah, I don't know. This is unmatched. The Bruce Lee looks awesome. My little Katamari pin. Bigfoot Robin Hood. And like, I'm super stoked to play this. So like, I don't need to wait to paint the figures to play. No, 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 no. Paint, no paint. I'm down to play. Half painted, drying. It's already painted, but it's got to dry. We'll get those little general sticks and slide them around the board. This was so hard to get. Oh my goodness. I don't think it comes out till September or something. You can pre order on their website, Restoration Games. Uh, Mondo Games helps them get some of the licenses, like the Bruce Lee, like the Jurassic Park. Uh, unfortunately, they, I got some insider scoop that us Canadians. They have to prove the game's popularity before they can expand the licensing to us. So while we will still get the legends that have um, open source or whatever the heck, um, public domain characters, Robin Hood Bigfoot, another public domain. Unfortunately, licensed stuff like Bruce Lee, Jurassic Park. Um, if they do the Buffy, the Buffy will not be coming this way but we if we get out there and we help this game grow in popularity I got to buy it i got to buy it seriously though if we get out there and buy the game and show the love because it is a sick game we can uh you know help get those over here uh price point was this was 40 us i think with the four figures the card the board that seems pretty fair. Like you're looking at like 13 bucks Canadian per deck, we'll call it. Right? For 40 bucks. So you do that as 10 bucks a dude. You get the deck, you get the, uh, cut the board in four pieces. So like 13 bucks Canadian, that's pretty good. Bruce Lee was 15. Or no, well, how much more? I don't know. So this was 40. And then these together were four. So, they're a little more. Well, you get one less dude for the same price. You know what I'm saying? But, it's sick. I got it all. This wasn't the only game that was selling out like crazy. Like, like I said, Borderlands was going out. Um, a new AEG game launched. It sold out. Something about salads and scoops. I don't know. Salad Spinner, the game. Die Hard Candy Bar, dude. This is so sick. I want to eat this so bad, but I don't. Is John McClane like my shirt? It was cool. Look at this thing, too. Look, I, so I got to show me. Look. They knew. They know. They know how popular they are. They know how much people love them. And they just want you to be like, buy them all. Look at this bag.
It's huge. It's enormous. They're like, oh, you got to buy all the Funko Pops. With a bag like this that you can literally put on the ground and climb inside of and get into. You know what I mean. But I will say this bag was sick because despite everyone telling me that it was breaking, I loaded the shit out of my bag and it held on. I had like all this stuff in this bag when I came home. And it held up, so. Props to you, Creepy Funko Kid. I guess, uh. I guess that worked for the man now. <laughs> what else? Is there anything else? Oh, I got some of these. Red velvet chips of home. That was pretty good. I don't know. Just all in all, it was a good time. You know, we walked around the city. Mmm. Mmm. There's a thing on here I want to show you guys. So there's this cool monument, right? Like that's the picture. Oh, that's me. And it's got these like sick steel, can't really see. But like, these are steel, it's like a boat and cannon, like a horse and cannon, I don't know. But then, That is underneath it. Look at how horrifying that is. So it's like down, see where those two black squares are right there? You can't see? That face is like right there. Ugh. Ugh. I'm gonna use this picture for something like the cover of an album or something I don't even know a horror movie something I'm just gonna get out people with this So I guess before I go, it was like, I don't know, it's like a fun story. It's just a plea. Two things. One, Dungeon Draft needs more love. Upper Deck, please give Dungeon Draft more expansions. Played it two years ago, still one of my most favorite games from all of Gen Cons I've been to. I still play it to this day. There's a copy downstairs in my house. Sleeved up, ready to go, ready to play. I need some new monsters. I feel like a doofus for missing the Dungeon Draft event. I didn't know it was a thing. I'm going to be more prepared next year. Because I would have slayed. <laughs> like, not even any chance. Like, cha, cha, cha. Came in there and been like, rah, bow, 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 bow. Anyway, that's enough of that. Dungeon Draft, cool. S second thing. At big conventions, anybody I know right now, it's only, I think, two of my buddies watching this, but it, it's on the internet. So I hope that this gets seen. Can we have some convention bathroom etiquette? Okay. Like, clean yourself a bit. We don't, every urinal doesn't need to have a bush. Okay? Like it. Three out of the four days, there was an egregious amount of pubic hair on every urinal. 
It was almost like somebody was just saving it up for years in baggies, waiting for Gen Con to go and sprinkle it on all of them. And like, I get it. We're, we're, we're hairy. We got some hairy people. That's fine. But like, pee it off the edge. Pee it into the toilet a little bit. Maybe don't grip and rip when you're taking the pants down a little bit. You know? Clean up the zone. Polish it up a little bit. Just... It's tough, you know what I mean? It's just... You know, I feel bad. Some guys gotta go clean all that. And like, going in there, trying to use the bathroom, trying to be like discreet, and you want to get close, you know, so you're not showing off your business to everybody. And you gotta stay back because there's like a curly cue hanging this far off. <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing. I mean, you're a respectable guy, but we don't need this gentleman eight feet from the urinal. Let's bring it in a little bit. Let's move it in. Let's bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. And keep your eyes forward. Twice, I've seen some looky loos. It's not, it's stay out of people's private space, man. It's just not, it's not the place to be like. Ooh, what's going on down over there? Uh, urinals, eyes forward. Start counting the tiles up. Count tiles up. Not down. When you're peeing, you get bored, you don't know what to do. Start following the grout like a little maze. Up. Don't be shaking your head like, you know, but just keep your eyes up. That's all I'm saying. Give everyone their space because they deserve it. Anywho, Jenko was a blast. I'm just messing around. This was a ton of fun. I hope everybody likes to play games because that's all I'm going to want to do for a little while once I get caught up with work because in my industry, you get punished for taking any time off. And people are like, oh, my sprinklers, you better help me. You know what I mean. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. We're going to have to play Unmatched. This is the game I'm really excited about. It's a little, you know, Dungeon Draft was a good one to get hyped about. It was cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. Last year was Battle Kittens. Also, cheap, 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 cheap. Um, but, I don't know. This has got, it's like board game mixed with magic, mixed with, like, the strategy and bat. Like, uh, we got to play it. So, anyway, I've been ranting on it for about an hour and a half now. Uh, I gotta eat dinner still because I'm very hungry and there's been somebody pestering me about their sprinklers for the last two hours so I think I should just at least be nice and uh, get back to them. Oh, two things I want to say cool. I got this which is not cool to anybody but like maybe me and a bunch of nine year olds but it was only 15 bucks because I saw it on Kijiji. Sucker. And then One flex. One real big flex. Look at this thing. Very close. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, <sighs> Mittens will be opening this. So let's cross our fingers and thumbs and hope that the box can stay nice and not damaged whatsoever. So be sure to check me out on YouTube. Um, still trying to get enough followers to get a custom URL. So that I could be YouTube.com front slash Uncle Muckle, but it's still just a bunch of gibberish. 
But you'll find me. Just look up Uncle Munkle. You know, some unboxing with mittens. We've got some VR time. It's been kind of like a little summer break. Uh, my buddy does editing for me. Solid dude, Dark Moon 22. Check out his channel as well. He's been on a uh, summer job out at camp. He's having the time of his life, so I'm happy for him, enjoying. Uh, I've been working like crazy, so I haven't been able to make as much, if any, videos lately. So, but you know, we're getting into August. Work is gonna start to slow down a little bit, especially since I'm gonna start telling people like, mmm, and mmm, mmm, and sit on this, and sit on this one. Only, you know what I'll be doing for real. And so yeah, we're gonna have uh, coming up. Eventually, will be an unboxing with mittens with this guy, and uh, some of the other stuff. Possibly a Funko verse or two. Uh, just kind of depends on how it goes. We've got the purple Xbox unboxing, uh, the Fortnite one. What else? There's a Fortnite code around here somewhere for some exclusive skin that'll be fancy and special. I don't know, I might do a giveaway for that because I don't play Fortnite. But I just wanted the purple Xbox. So did my girlfriend. So now we have a purple Xbox and it's dope. But yeah, you know. I mean, it's so flex. It's so, like, this is the nice box, too. Funko, take note from Nintendo, man. That's a collector's edition. Anywho, I'm excited to play Fire Emblem. We've got so many, like, there's so much. So much to do. Like, I should just quit my job and spend my life on Twitch playing video games and board games. and But then you don't make any money. So I got to pay the bills. So unfortunately, we still got to go to work. But maybe one day there'll be a time where I can just sit here in front of everybody and just play these stuff. You know? Now I gotta go shut down, eat dinner, and get ready for work. But such is life. We'll enjoy. I hope everybody enjoyed. Just gotta stay happy. And good things will come. Um, I don't know. Hope to see everybody next time. And uh, there's always room for more Gen Con. So any of my buddies watching who wanted to come, be sure to just hit me up. We gotta hit me up early because this stuff starts popping off come January we're ordering badges so thanks thanks for watching check out my YouTube and uh, don't forget to do all that crap that everybody says at the end of their videos subscribe and like and all that other stuff and other than that, have a good night, everybody. And now I gotta do that weird thing where it's like, have a good night, see you later. <laughs>